Welcome everyone to this ABS presentation where we will be exploring the intersection of public health and religion. So today, the aim of this presentation is really just to share some initial insights that were developed by this reading group um, that began to meet regularly in the fall of 2021. And so we will share a little bit about um, how this group came together, what was our process, what were some key questions that emerged out of that um, consultative space, and then maybe what are some future steps that we're hoping to take together. Um, there are four of us currently represented today. So my name is Giovanna. Um, I am from North Carolina. I have a background in public health and social work, and my focus is specifically maternal and child health. And I am also serving in my neighborhood, um, currently tutoring a book one study circle with some social workers and uh, a children's class teacher and a mother of three. My name is Anish Aurora. I am from Milton, Ontario, but I'm currently studying at McGill University. I'm doing a PhD in family medicine and primary care. I am learning to uh, help out with children's classes, and I'm also taking part in a number of Ruhi, uh, Ruhi circles, and I've recently become a father of a puppy. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Hatala. I currently live in Winnipeg, uh, Manitoba. I'm faculty of, uh, in community health sciences at the University of Manitoba. My background's actually in psychology, but since my earlier work, I've kind of drifted more into this aspect of community health, focused mostly on adolescent wellness and resilience, and questions around that and spirituality as a part of that process to support the young people in their well-being. And I'm also uh, learning in my own neighborhood, like I'm sure many of you are, uh, about uh, applying the principles of the faith to social development and community action, uh, learning uh, to serve as an animator of a junior youth uh, empowerment program, and also a father of a young two-year-old. My name is John Asani. I'm faculty in the Department of Health Policy and Management at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. I work in public policy mostly, and uh, also, um, uh, oh, I live in Washington, D.C., and um, uh, have two boys, uh, six and nine, and um, have the pleasure of also um, serving as a tutor uh, for a study circle. Thank you. So to begin our presentation, I think we'll hear from Anish, who will really just take us through um, how this group came about. Thank you, Giovanna. Um, before I even talk about how our group came together, what I really wanted to highlight was what our reading group is for the, for the listeners that may not be familiar with this kind of setting. So the Association for Baha'i Studies, in response to a call that was given to them by the Universal House of Justice, was asked to really foster the space where people can come together to think about, to read, to consult on, and to potentially <clears throat> contribute to a discourse. And, and so Andrew Atala and I uh, in 2019 were part of a reading group with Dr. Todd Smith uh, on science, science and religion and sort of the, the philosophical underpinnings of that context. And together we decided, to, we, we connected and we decided we wanted to carry forward with those learnings and, those, and, and that kind of space, but with more uh, of a public health focus. And so we created this group, we met with participants, and what is really essential to note is that all of our participants really longed for a space like this where we could come together to think about uh, public health, the intersections of it with science and, 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 and religion and spirituality, and really foster an environment where we could do so in, in a very safe, very open, very critical uh, and very consultative manner. I'll pass this on now to Andrew, who will talk a little bit more about the logistics of how we thought through the topics and grappled with choosing a reading list. That's great. Thanks, Anish. We started this with a reading group uh, the year before around science and religion, and we really 
We're inspired by that group uh, to look more deeply at the topic of public health, because in one sense, we realized uh, there's a lot of overlap and similarities in terms of how public health is conceptualized and what its goals are in terms of advancing the health of populations. And then at the same time, from a different perspective, religion is also there with looking after or supporting the health and well-being of populations. So we wanted to interrogate that overlap a little better to come to understand both of them and try to advance uh, some kind of an integration and dialogue uh, between the two fields as well. So uh, a part of the inspiration in terms of choosing the readings and going through uh, that whole process, part of the inspiration came from a uh, paper and presentation by Dr. Farzam Arbab uh, that was done in 2016 on the intellectual life of the Baha'i community. And in that paper, some of you are probably familiar uh, with it. It's, it's not focused on public health uh, and this topic per se, but what he really encouraged us to think about is this examination of a field and going really deep into understanding the assumptions, the intellectual foundations uh, that give rise to uh, current thinking in a field. And there's one quote I wanted to share that really kind of uh, inspired us or, you know, gave us some uh, some motivation in terms of what uh, what readings to pick. Um, so this is on page 14, uh, where he shares, all that is being suggested is that such a careful examination should go beyond behavior and sociopolitical structure, and should also include the intellectual foundations of the present order, at least the intellectual foundations of social, economic, and political thought, and let me be so bold as to say the intellectual foundations of culture. So in many ways, that's what we were trying to do in this reading group was uncover the intellectual foundations of the culture of public health and try to understand uh, where religion and spirituality as a, as a system of knowledge fit in with or relate to uh, the system of knowledge that of science that is generally the foundation of, of public health and how those how those relate. So at a basic structure, it was about maybe three months of uh, reading together. It was a pretty intensive process, uh, pretty rigorous in that sense that we had about three or four readings each week. We met weekly uh, for that, that time uh, and had um, guided uh, questions that helped us kind of talk together, consult, and really just try to, again, pick through and uncover some of these foundations uh, of the field and learn part of the motivation throughout all of this as well was how do we make any kind of offering uh, inspired from the Baha'i insights of the world, Baha'i community, different learning uh, that the Baha'i community has been generating. Uh, how might we be able to apply that in some way to the field of public health? So part of the readings, the first bit was more of a historical kind of organization around what is public health? How did it come about? What are some of the history of it? Uh, then we kind of moved more into some of the current reading around religion, spirituality, and public health. And we were, we were surprised that there's actually quite a, a field. There's a lot of publications, a lot of people that are that are into this uh, area of research. And so it also gave us an opportunity to learn about these individuals. Who are they? What are they saying? What are their backgrounds and assumptions? And to just kind of build a better sense of, of this interface between religion uh, and public health. And then from there, we, we moved into, uh, we spent a fair amount of weeks looking at some of the publications by the international Baha'i community. Uh, at the level of the UN and uh, kind of looking at systems of governance and uh, world order and how uh, insights in terms of the institutional process of the Baha'i community, how does that also relate to how public health functions, how it's operating, some of its goals and assumptions as well. And then at the end, we, we dove a little bit even deeper into some of the Baha'i concepts and papers around the harmony of science and religion 
and again how that how that connects with public health and i think just to one more note before i pass it off is throughout all of this of course uh was uh the covid 19 pandemic that really you know probably for all of us we had the experience of listening to public health officials hearing governments talk about it and so that was also, you know, really on the forefront of our minds throughout this whole process, bringing our own experience, bringing, you know, public health orders, government mandates, how do people, uh, you know, how are governments and public health institutions operating to protect their populations? What are the recommendations? How is science, you know, informing all of that discourse? Uh, so part of it was also, you know, our own experience of going through that pandemic and how we're seeing religion and spirituality come into that process uh, and how that also kind of shaped uh, some of our readings and our thinking and, and helping us identify some of these intellectual foundations of the field as well. So there was a lot of rich insights uh, that came throughout this time. And I'll pass it off now so we can go a little bit deeper into what, uh, what were some of the key questions and assumptions that we, uh, we were struggling with and trying to learn about. Thanks, Andrew. I just do want to acknowledge that um, the success of this group was very much a function of the preparation and groundwork that you and Anish laid. Um, so um, to, to discuss the, some of the key questions that, that came up. Um, one of them may not be of any surprise to, to, to our audience and to, to those who are interested in the issues of spirituality, religion, and public health. Um, and, and it's probably um, perfectly captured in the first reading that we were assigned, um, which was called The Elephant in the Room, um, or one of the first readings. And it was really about how um, the experience of, of spirituality and engagement with religion is uh, is a is a kind of a, a significant experience for the vast majority of people on planet Earth, and yet um, if one was to go through an entire graduate program on public health, um, the only context in which one might hear the word religion is when um, public health practitioners are trying to get something done. So they will engage with religion in a very instrumental way. They'll say something like, well, um, we need to get this kind of um, public health education message out there. Let's, let's talk to the religious leaders, for example. And that will be like literally the only time you'll hear it in a, in a two-year program of study with, 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 with hundreds of, of, of study hours and readings. So, um, so I think this idea of the elephant in the room was, was, was a good, it was a good one because um, for many of us, for, for, for the vast majority of people um, alive today, the, the, the experience of, of the spirit and spirituality is um, very much a daily experience. And yet in public health, it's, it's almost silent. Um, now, what was wonderful was that, as, as was described earlier, we've encountered a rich literature that existed on the topic, and yet we didn't see it in our everyday kind of training and practice. Um, related to that point was um, that our own experience as kind of public health uh, researchers and practitioners was, um, if you like, very much a materialistic um, basis for talking about health. I remember a conversation with one of my mentors uh, which was, you know, we're, we're in the field of public health, we want health for all, we, you know, we want to create the healthiest possible world. Uh, but the question of why was never asked, why do we need health? Uh, why are we here? What's our purpose? Are we, are we healthy so we can just consume more and acquire more and accumulate more? Or are we healthy for some deeper purpose? Um, and actually kind of the absence of any explanation or interrogation of that kind of bigger question or ultimate concern was always um, um, a, a source of kind of internal discomfort for me. And so this reading group was uh, really my first experience of having the opportunity to interrogate that, to, to explore it, to try and understand uh, why that might be. Um, and then I think a further point um, that was 
very encouraging, not only for me, but I think for the remainder of the group, was that this group was not only a welcome space for us, uh, um, but for some of my colleagues also, one of my colleagues from, from work, I, I mentioned in passing, I'm in this wonderful group, and she asked if she could join. And so I feel like it, it also tapped into a kind of a longing for, for people uh, who are interested in questions of religion, spirituality, and public health. It, it gave us a space uh, to explore um, the implications of certain principles together. Uh, one discussion really stands out to me, uh, um, as, as Andrew was mentioning, was about a, a document uh, from the Baha'i International Community about this on the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. And the kind of the underlying theme of that document is um, if we if we begin from the principle of the oneness of humanity, what would the the agencies and the um, kind of uh, uh, you know effects of the United Nations look like? Um, and we began to ask ourselves the same question about public health. If we really accepted the the principle of the oneness of humanity, how might we have addressed, say, for example? the distribution of vaccines during the COVID-19 pandemic? How might we have understood um, the way we think about the movement of populations and so on? So these were some of the questions that were raised. Um, uh, a final point that I'll share is that, um, like in anything, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're always able to learn when we gather and consult and explore a theme together. And I think one of the, um, you know, one of the things that this reading group fulfilled for me was the opportunity to uh, continue a dialogue and an ongoing conversation about religion, spirituality, and public health that I really longed for, for years, really, and, and had never found the opportunity to do so. So it, it almost was a, a, a weekly experience for me that when we finished our discussions, I had this immense feeling of gratitude um, that this space had been created and this deep longing um, had been fulfilled. Thanks, John. Um, I think, yeah, to elaborate a little bit more, I think um, these were well articulated points. And I think maybe I'll start by saying that, you know, just having the reading group was a very systematic way for us to begin articulating some of these questions, which maybe, you know, were some passing thoughts in our head, but being able to come together every week and and sit down with readings, I think being able to then start um, etching out those questions, I think was a very helpful exercise for all of us. Um, I think another aspect, I think, of, of our discussions and our work is that we were conscious that, you know, to advance the discourse, we also wanted to find these points of unity where, where we could come, and come in with um, other peoples in the field and kind of see, okay, like, where do we agree and how can we advance those discussions? And so, as Andrew was mentioning, we were actually pleasantly surprised to find um, so much literature out there that had been published, but maybe that wasn't well known um, to, to many of us because, you know, as John had mentioned, we didn't encounter it in schools or in our, in our work. Um, but in encountering this literature, we found some points of unity that maybe <clears throat> it's helpful to just even just mention that for example, um, one author, Oman, like began to ask this question, like what should even public health students be taught about, you know, at school and what kind of material should we be integrating in, in the education? Um, I think another aspect was this departure from seeing religion as just a, an interesting factor that impacted health to maybe moving towards religion and spirituality and religious communities becoming to be seen as a collaborative partner in connection to health and how together these two um, communities, the scientific community and the religious community could come and you know, work together. I think it was very interesting that our reading room was also happening during the pandemic because then that very question became very practical for us. So during the pandemic, we were able to explore current events and explore how religion could work in tandem with the public health care system. I think also um, having the participation of John's colleague was, was something really helpful because 
Um, it allowed us to see that this was a conversation that was beyond just ourselves and that there were others out there thinking very deeply about these questions. And um, one conversation that stood out to me actually with, with uh, Beth, the, the colleague from John, um, was that at some point we asked ourselves, we, we asked ourselves, when did you know, concepts like kindness and having hope become utopian ideals? And why were these not things that we were talking about regularly in terms of how can the, our public health care systems that we are familiar with reflect these things, you know, reflect these spiritual qualities, reflect these values that inherently are how humans are to relate with each other. And so I think, you know, um, while we were also coming up with very fundamental questions about public health that related to our purpose, as John had mentioned, I think this reading group also helped bring that back to like the current reality of, of what we were living and what we were doing in our work and in our communities. And so I think then, you know, on, on a more personal level for me, who um, I'm currently not um, in a, working in a professional capacity, but the ability to have this reading group was tremendous because it allowed me to continue exploring the field, continue exploring and being connected to, to these questions. Even as I'm like the primary um, caregiver at home with my children, I'm still able, to, still able to contribute to the discourse. And I think just that little space every week in a way that it, the way it happened because it was flexible, the rhythm was manageable, um, allowed for this coherence also in my life, which I think uh, was something that was really special as well about this group. So um, definitely very grateful for it, as John has mentioned, and very grateful for the work that was done to be able to allow for this group, reading group to happen. Um, yeah, so I don't know if there's maybe any other thoughts that Andrew and you should like to share before we close this presentation. Yeah, I can just maybe share one, one other point kind of underlying all of our approach was this attitude of learning that we're familiar with in other aspects of the Baha'i community in our expansion and consolidation work, but bringing that into this level of contributing and learning about discourse, we also saw how the areas of action and reflection and consultation and study, just how important that was to also advancing our, our process of you know, learning about the discourse, learning how to contribute to the discourse. And one of the things that we're still hoping to do as a group uh, moving forward is learn about writing together uh, as a particular outlet or a particular form of action uh, in this area and how we can uh, work on different forms of writing together, academic publications, other kinds of kind of our own notes and reflections from the process, but how to also put things down uh, into paper uh, and writing. And we're, we're still learning about that, but it's also an exciting area to do as a, or learn about as a collaborative uh, process. Uh, most of writing in academic levels tends to be individuals on their computer alone, but we really were excited about the idea of exploring how to write as a, as a collaborative and put some of these thoughts and insights uh, together on paper and share them and get feedback and just begin that process like others mentioned about engaging uh, in uh, with others and like-minded individuals who are also learning about these areas. Thank you, Andrew. I think it might also be worth mentioning that we've also done some collaboration together. So um, we're currently experimenting with contributing to each other's work as well by giving feed feedback on written pieces. Um, we've tried to apply for small grants um, to collaborate on projects together. Um, we want to explore how to use different forms of communication. So whether it's, you know, a written piece, a blog post or a podcast um, to see how um, we can include a broader audience also in this conversation. And then I think we've also talked about maybe creating spaces where other colleagues can be invited to explore some of these themes together. I am really excited to actually join you all in the live session uh, and to actually be able to actually to explore any questions that may come out uh, from this brief introduction into our group. And I'm also very excited to continue working alongside these wonderful people in trying to advance our discourse and contribute as much as we can and learn 
as much as we can um, moving forward. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you at the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you.